Hey, welcome back everybody. This is going to be the next and the final segment of the 351 Cleaver build. You remember this is going way back. I started this quite a while ago and um, so we're getting to the point where we got this buttoned up now. I wanted the, the last video, which is part four, to be the last one, but it just ended up being like an over an hour and 20 minutes long, and I was like, this is just too much. So I split it into two segments, and so the next segment is going to be the actual assembly of the engine all the way up to the top end, the valve adjustment, and all that stuff. So I hope you enjoy this. I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about it. The video speaks for itself. The video speaks for itself. So we're just going to jump right into this. And uh, uh, another thing I would mention is I know that there's people that haven't seen all, all of the previous ep episodes. I'm going to put on each episode, I'm going to put a link to the other episode so you can watch it. Because you do kind of need to watch this series uh, from part one all the way to th through. It's a lot of information. I would appreciate it. I'm not, not asking for much money. but uh, So... I will probably put a link to that down there somewhere if somebody's interested in it. So I appreciate it and here we go. Okay, the next step now you guys, we've gotten to the point where we're ready to assemble our short block. One thing that I would advise you to do is just, you now we've final washed this thing. Just take and do a once over on your cylinders, get some WD-40 in there. And with some white paper towels, just wipe the cylinders, make sure you got this spotlessly clean. I've already cleaned all of these and wiped them out. So we've got really clean cylinders. And we're going to take our number one piston and rod assembly here. We've done all the clearancing, the ring end gaps, the piston to cylinder wall, the oil clearances. Everything is looking really good on this engine. So we're going to go ahead and take our number one cap off. Now the orientation of the piston and rod assembly is pretty important. On these trick flow pistons, the valve relief that we have on here is going to go to the lifter valley. That's for our intake valve. They didn't put a valve relief over here because the dish is adequate for that, for the exhaust valve. Also, the big side of the chamfer the big chamfer goes toward the crankshaft and on this particular rod that's going to put our bearing notches or our tangs to the inside not the not the outside of the block but the inside which is typical for small block ford that's that's same configuration as a factory take some wd-40 and make sure that your rings and skirts are lubricated I've talked about a lot of this before. Total Seal recommends WD-40, not oil. On the bearing itself, we're gonna put some light assembly oil on there. I've actually got engine oil in this bottle. And then, of course, we're gonna to have to use a ring compressor. Like I've said so many times before, I had Total Seal make me up a cone-style ring compressor, which is a 4.125. Go ahead and take and stagger your ring end gaps. You don't want these lined up. Make sure that your ring end gaps, leave one here, put the other one to the other side, and then just go ahead and get your ring compressor, cone style, with the, the big side of the cone up. Get, work your rings down gently in there, don't force them. You gotta kinda, kinda work them in there. Get the piston all the way down inside that ring compressor like that, that's what you wanna see. And then of course, we're going to very gently push this in the bore with our valve relief here to the lifter valley. So we're going to go into the bore real easy, nice and easy. And we want that just to lay on the surface of the bore. And then we're going to take our soft hammer and you want to grab the connecting rod on the back side here so you don't jam it into the cylinder or anything. And we're just going to gently tap our piston into the bore. We don't need our cone style compressor anymore and we're just going to go down. Now on the back side you want to be careful here. You can use a journal protector down here if you want. I just go in when I, ha I don't have studs here. I just go down over the crankshaft and I'm just real gentle. I hold this and I make sure I don't jam this into the crank and damage the crank at all. Just go nice and slow 
get that right up over the crank and you're going to pull it over and again this is a this is a forge wide radius crank so on these rods we have a real big chamfer on this one side and also we have like I talked about earlier the narrower bearing so they don't ride up on that radius once you get your connecting rod in then you're going to take your cap and of course we don't want to put it on dry we will put some engine oil on the cap and you want to make sure that this goes on correctly the bearing notches that is your locating notch right there is going to go to the inside which is down down here not the outside of the block and it matches the other bearing notch and also that's going to put our big chamfer here on this side to clear this radius so that's that's pretty critical we're just going to get the cap on there run the bolts in and torque it to specs Go ahead and torque them up. Once you get your rod torqued, make sure that it moves freely side to side. And also you want to rotate the engine and make sure that the engine rotates with no binding or anything like that. This one feels really good. We have no, no issues here. Now, since this is a stroker engine, another thing I want to talk to you about is clearancing here. Depending on what piston and rod assembly you have, you could have clearance issues on the bottom of the engine. Now, we don't really, with, with this particular setup, the four inch stroke and the scat rods and these pistons, I've done this build before multiple times and I've never had any clearance issues with these dart blocks. That doesn't mean that you won't, depending on your combination. So you always gotta check this. So we've got really good clearance between our connecting rod than the bottom of the cylinder and the pan rail we got no issues here another thing that you need to look for you guys is this what we want to do is look in this cam tunnel sometimes on the stroker kits the crankshaft and the rod will interfere with the cam so we've got our number one rod in there and we're just going to rotate this engine. You can see that rod moving. It comes down. But if we look straight in on that rod, that rod is not anywhere near that cam bore. So we know that on the camshaft, the, journal, the, the lobes are going to be smaller than the diameter of this journal. And since I'm not interfering anywhere near that cam bore with that rod, you can see that coming down. If you look straight in on that, I got all kinds of room there. So I'm not going to have any problems with cam and connecting rod contact. But you do have to check this because in certain situations, depending on your connecting rod combination and your, your, your stroker kit, the rods may contact the cam. That's real typical on a stock small block Chevy stroker build. With this engine, we got no clearance problems whatsoever, so everything looks really good. Okay guys, so off camera, I am gonna go ahead and put the other seven connecting rod and piston assemblies in our Ford Stroker here. Uh, once I get together, we'll come back and I'll show you some of the checks and the clearances that you got to, you, you have to look at on this Stroker build. So uh, I'll get that done and I'll be back. All right guys, so we got the, uh, I got the short block together. Everything looks really good. Uh, the engine turns really nice no binding or anything like that we got good side clearance between all our rods I checked all those make sure you check that with a feeler gauge make sure it's in specs make sure your rod is moving back and forth both of them we've got everything torqued up on the bottom end here and everything looks and feels really good I am gonna recheck the deck clearance since we had to actually had to go with a different piston but I don't anticipate that being any any different 
So, yeah, looks really good. Short block came out really nice. Everything, all the clearances are right. Everything's balanced. So I've got something really critical to this build that we just got today. We'll take a look at it here. We got our comp cams, cam and lifter kit. Also comes with valve springs and so forth. So let's dig into this and take a look at this kit. The K35-7771-8, specifically made for the cleaver build. So uh, let's uh, open it up and see what we got. All right, so we got our packing slip here. Now this did come with springs and retainers, which we are probably going to use because they match the cam. The Edelbrock heads that we're using are, are assembled, but we're probably gonna go ahead and just use the springs that came with the kit because we want them to match the cam. Changing the springs out on those heads is not a big deal. So we got springs, retainers. Uh, we got keepers, valve stem seals. And then of course we got our lifters, which is our, they've got a, a, a tie bar that goes on and attaches them. So those are our lifters. And then of course we've got a billet timing chain set and all of this goodness right here. So if we open this up and look at the card, now this is a solid roller cam, 608, 614 lift, and the duration at 50 is 242, 248. So a fairly radical cam in this thing. So, um, but yeah, so we're happy. We're gonna go ahead and do the cam installation and then we can get the rocker arms ordered up and we'll figure out our push rod length. So we're, we're getting there. So let's jump in, right into this and get the cam and lifters installed. So on our, your cam guys, I do like to use a Molly graphite assembly lube on the gear. But on the lobes themselves, especially on a, a roller, I just use this, this Lucas assembly lube. And we want to make sure that we get assembly lube on all these. You don't ever want to put these in dry. Just be careful when you go in here, when you get toward the last one, don't force this in. You gotta kinda work it into those bearings. And again, be generous with that assembly loop. Don't be stingy with it. I've got the cam plug out of the back back here so I can grab the back of the cam and we can get it in. Be real careful here, don't nick that bearing with your gear or anything like that. Just go ahead and get your get the cam in. Just slide that right in. You should be able to turn this cam by hand, and I can, I'm turning it, so it's not binding up or anything. Now, there is a also a dowel that goes with that, and it actually, there's a couple of different length dowels that go in here, depending on what kind of fuel pump eccentric we're using. And that just slides right into that hole there. Okay, so our next step here, guys, is to put our Cloy's timing chain and gear set on that we've got up here. Now, 
Also very important that we make sure that the cam plug is on. And then there's, I talked about this earlier, there's gallery plugs here, there's oil gallery plugs. There's two here and there's one right inside here. You want to make sure you get all of these gallery plugs in and get them tied. If you leave one of these out, you're going to be in big trouble because these are, these are gallery plugs that have to be blocked off so that you can have oil pressure, maintain oil pressure. Now, the one thing that I would advise you here is you got to watch this plug in here because you got your distributor bore right here, distributor mounts right here. Sometimes that plug will protrude out too far and it won't let the distributor in. It looks like this one's in pretty flush, so it's good. So just watch that and make sure that that plug that's in there is not protruding out into this bore here. Otherwise the customer won't be able to get the distributor in. Okay, so the timing, the initial timing set up on this is dot to dot. And the nice thing about Ford's is the key on the crank and the, the dowel pin on the cam are basically six and 12 here. So the, so in other words, the dowel pin is directly in line with my timing mark here. And my keyway on the crank is directly in line with the timing mark here. Now there are three marks on the front of this gear. And also the keyways are shaped to match the marks. There's a triangle. So the top of that keyway looks like a triangle and there's a triangle here. This one has a circle, which is the one we're going to use, which means the timing is straight up. And this one is a square. So it has a square keyway. And what this does, you guys, is this just advances or retards the timing and the instructions in your timing set will tell you how, but with a performance cam, especially, we always want to run this with the circle up, which is straight up timing. So, and, and again, these gears are not a press fit on the crank on the Ford. It's just, it slides right on. And it, sometimes it can be a little bit tough. We had a, you always want to make sure that you deburr the keyways down here. This gear goes on without having to pound it on. So we've probably got a couple burrs here. We're going to deburr that with a file and clean it off real good and then we'll get our gear on. Okay, so now that we've deburred out, we got our gear sliding on here nice and easy. Then we're going to take our cam gear and it's just going to go on. The, I've already set this up ahead of time and got these at 6 and 12. So we're just going to hang the chain on there. And this should go right up. And you got to kind of put these on together, so you want to slide each one of them. So you kind of got to get that cam gear started on the pin, and you got to just push this one in slightly. And we just want to gently tap that gear on. You don't want to get crazy. And so we've got this fuel pump eccentric, and it has a, a piece of the the eccentric that's rolled over and it has this lip sticking out, that's going to go right here in the dowel hole. The shorter dowel pin sits back in and so that allows this to catch the inside of that hole and that's what keeps the eccentric from moving. And then you just take your fuel pump eccentric, you find that locating hole and you just run this down and torque it. We're going to put that on and torque it, and that is your fuel pump eccentric that's going to actuate the arm for the fuel pump that goes into the front cover. And that's really basically all that is to it once I torque that down, the chain and gear set. And also make sure that your marks on your gears are dot to dot, 6 and 12, and they are. We're going to degree this cam, but initially you want those marks dot to dot. So this looks really good. I'm going to put a little bit of Loctite just for safety, just to drop on this, and then I'll get this on and torque it. And once we get that done, we'll be able to degree the cam and hopefully get the heads on. 
Okay guys, so now that we've got our timing chain on, got everything timed up, it's uh, important that when you put the cylinder heads on, if you look at your Ford gaskets here, you'll notice that the front is blocked off. Sometimes they'll have a little bleed hole here, but the open portions of the gasket have to go in the back of the block right here. This needs to be open. Same thing on the other side. Always make sure, and it also on the Felpro gaskets here, it says front. Make sure that the gaskets are on correct. They are on, they, they are directional. If you get these mixed up and flipped around and you block these back passages off, you're going to overheat your engine almost instantly. So the next step is going to be to put the cylinder heads on this thing. I went ahead and degreed the camera, the, the cam off camera. I'm not going to do that on camera with this motor because, I mean, I've got so many cam degree videos. It would just be redundant. But I do recommend degree in the cam. Uh, which we did on this engine. So the next step is we're going to take our cylinder heads. You don't want to put any kind of sealer or anything on here. And we're just going to get them set up on the engine and torqued. I always like to take a few bolts and put them in. You see I've got the, the ARP bolts in the head. And that way I can line these up on the dowels and I can get a bolt started in this thing. So just kind of line it up. Get it on your dowels, and before you walk away, I've said this before, make sure that you snug these bolts down or run these bolts in a little bit so that the head doesn't fall off of the engine when you walk away. We don't want to, we definitely don't want to drop these cylinder heads. So we'll get our, get both of the heads on, get all the fasteners in, and then we'll torque them up. Alright guys, so the next step, you can see we're getting our lifters in. We're using a CompCams solid roller cam here. And I would advise you, very important, that before you put these lifters in, that you soak them in, in oil. I've got a coffee can here full of clean engine oil. So then once they're soaked, and the reason we're soaking them is these are solid rollers. We don't have any hydraulic mechanism here. And even if we did, you don't really need to soak that. The reason we're soaking these is for the needle bearings on the rollers down here. Don't use any kind of assembly lube or anything on these because that gums them up and it makes them, they don't want to spin when you start the engine. So just a light engine oil and go ahead and get all of your lifters in their respective bore. And once we do that, I'm going to come back and we're going to do some measurements and we're going to measure up our rockers and our lifters and so forth for our uh, push rod length. So I'll get these in and we'll come back and do that. Don, now the next step is we want to look at our cam card. And the reason I say that is because <clears throat> many of you will be doing builds with hydraulic camshafts. This particular camshaft that we've got here it's a CompCams 35-771-8. This is actually a solid lifter cam, and so that means that the lifters have no hydraulic give in them. They're solid. So we have to take our feeler gauges, and we have to adjust lash into these. They have to have lash at the valve for clearance, and it's a specified lash. So if you look at our cam card here, right up here on the cam card, it says that we need our intake lash to be 16 thousandths, and exhaust is 18. So we're going to take a 16 and an 18 thousandths feeler blade and adjust those. For big roller cams like this, and I know you, you've seen this adjustment procedure before, we can't really use the firing order method. You have to use the exhaust open intake close method and I'll show you a couple of them and then I'll go ahead and do the rest off camera. So for solid lifters here with poly locks, we're going to do, I'm just going to do this cylinder right here, this second cylinder back because it's easier to see on camera. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rotate the engine and I'm going to watch my exhaust valve. Now on this particular cylinder, this is my intake valve and this is my exhaust valve. So we're going to start with this one. I want to watch my exhaust valve. Right now my intake's open. We're going to rotate that around till that, that closes. There it goes. It's going down. So we want to watch this and I want you to watch this push rod or lifter and this rocker right here specifically. Right now it's loose. We got all kinds of lash, which is fine. But we're going to rotate that and we're going to watch this exhaust here. So the procedure is exhaust valve just starts to open and then we're going to adjust our intake. So we're going to watch that exhaust. There it goes. You see how that moved? I'll back it off. If you look right here and even right here, you can see that that exhaust, boom, it just started to open. At that point, 
you're going to adjust the intake on that cylinder. Now the intake is 16 thousandths on the solid cam. So we want to take our 16 thousandths filler gauge. So now that our exhaust has just started to open, this is our intake here. We're going to adjust the intake. So we're going to go down. Now we got our 16 thousandths filler gauge. So we're just going to put the filler gauge in there and we're just going to run this down until I take up the slack. So that filler gauge starts to get a little snug. And right now it's pretty loose still. But I'm going to run this down and with poly locks you can run them down by hand or you can use a wrench if you want to. But I'm going to go down, okay, so right there I just got rid of the slop with the filler gauge in there, okay? Now at that point then we're going to take our Allen head up here and we're going to lock, we're just going to run that down and we're going to lock it in place and that's going to give us 16 thousandths clearance here. Now you want to put a wrench on here because you don't want to, you don't want this thing, the outer body of this poly lock to move. We've got it set at 16 thousandths. We want to hold this in place and we want to run that nut down good and tight. Okay, get that good and tight as tight as you can by hand and that'll hold that in place and then we take and see we're still a little snug here but we can pull it out and you see we've got lash we've got some clearance there that is our lash for the intake now to do the exhaust on the same cylinder see this one's loose here as well on that same cylinder here and we want to watch the intake the intake is a little bit different we're going to rotate this the exhaust is going to open once with the exhaust closes, we're going to get down into overlap and you're going to see that intake start to move. There it goes. So on the intake, we're, what we're going to do is we're going to open that intake all the way to the top of the lobe travel and we're going to watch it. Once we get to max lift here, we're going to wait till that starts to drop. If I keep going here, you can see, okay, that lifter started to drop. Right when the intake starts to drop, that's where you want to adjust your exhaust valve over here on the same cylinder. Okay, so this is our intake that's adjusted, our exhaust. The spec is 18 thousandths, so they need a little bit more clearance because they run hotter. And you want to always want to follow what the manufacturer says, okay? So we're going to go up to 18 thousandths which is right there, and we're going to do the same thing. We got clearance there. We're going to put that 18 thousandths in there, and then we're just going to go ahead and we're going to run this down until that gets snug. And we want to go all the way down until we feel some resistance. Now right there, I've got resistance on it. So you can see the feeler blade is stuck in there. Now it's not super tight. I just pinched it in there. We want to hold this from moving. Same thing. We're going to run our Allen head poly lock down and we want to tighten that up use a wrench to hold the polylock body and you want to get that as tight as you can by hand and then we just there's our clearance okay you can see we've got clearance there with a little little it's a little bit snug that is our 18 thousandths and that's adjusted so i'm going to go through and do all of the rest of the cylinders off camera i won't do it on camera because you'll probably die of boredom and go to another video but I'll go ahead and get these adjusted and I'll come back and we'll talk about putting this intake manifold on. All right guys, so as you can see, I've got the gaskets on. Now what I did is the water ports are these little round holes here for the cleaver manifold. So what I did is I put gasket sealer on the heads underneath the gasket and I've just got these studs and these makeshift nuts on here just to kind of get the gasket to adhere. I will usually put the silicone RTV on there and let the gasket sit there for an hour or so. That way when I get go to put the manifold on here, like you'll see in a few minutes, we don't have any problem with the gasket moving. Now, another thing I would mention here is you've got a half inch pipe plug here. This is an oil gallery. You got to be dang sure that you get this in before you put the intake on. Otherwise, you're going to have serious oil pressure starvation problems. So we're just going to go ahead and run this down. You don't need any sealer or anything on these threads. If this seeps a little oil, it's not going to matter because it's going right down into the intake. But you do want to go ahead and get this pipe plug in here and get it good and tight. 
make sure it's not going to vibrate out of there or anything. So we snug that up just about as tight as we can get it with an Allen wrench. That's all there is to it. We've got all of our valves adjusted. We've got our, our lifters and everything in place. Got our gallery plugs hooked up. Got our gaskets on. Now it's time to lay some silicone here and then we'll put the intake on. They do have gaskets for the front and the back of this manifold here, but I do not recommend that you use those. What you want to do, and again, around the water jackets here, let's just take a small little bead of silicone around that water port area. You don't need to put any silicone really on the intake runners or anything. And then where the gasket meets the head here, you want to put a blob of silicone right in there so this thing doesn't leak in all four corners. Right in there. And then we're just going to lay a thick bead of silicone all the way across, just like that. You want to make sure that that's thick enough that it's going to take up the space between the manifold and the block. So we put a thick bead on here and then when we put the manifold on we just let that squish out a little bit. You could use the end gaskets here but like I said they have a tendency to leak. In fact Edelbrock even recommends beads of silicone in front and back here rather than the gaskets so all right so we've got our our manifold here all of our surfaces are nice and clean so we're going to go ahead and get our temporary studs and nuts off of there now that our gaskets have been sitting here for an hour or so we know that they're set up and they're not going to move what i like to do is i actually like to leave these studs in even though i'm not going to use them for the manifold we're going to use a set of arps go with the intake but like i said i'm going to go ahead and leave these in that helps to guide that intake down on we take our intake manifold and we just set her right down on those four studs and that does a really good job of guiding this thing on. That way you don't mess up your silicone or anything on the ends. Set the manifold straight down on and now we can get a few bolts of our manifold bolts in the center. Then we can remove the studs, the guide studs. I recommend you get the ARP fasteners for these. It does a really nice job. You don't have to clean the old bolts or anything. Plus, it's a better quality bolt. And also on aluminum, make sure you put the washer on there. That's really important. We don't want to have any issues with damage in this intake. So go ahead and get your bolts in there. Once I get all the bolts in, I'll come back and we'll torque them. And you actually have two different size bolts here. You've got a 3 8 bolt and you've got a 5 16 So the set's going to have both in them. It's pretty hard to mix those up because they don't fit in the, the other hole. So. All right, now that we've got all the bolts snugged down, you want to torque these in sequence. Now it's important to remember on the Cleveland manifold, you got two different size bolts here. The bolts that go in at an angle here are 3 8 16 and the bolts that are going straight down, these two in the middle and the two on the outside, they are 5 16 and they have a lower torque value. However, you have to do everything in sequence. So the torque spec is on the 3 8 bolts, 30 pounds, and on the 5 16 bolts, 25 pounds. So we're going to start out, our torque sequence is we start with the middle bolts and we alternate back and forth and move to the outsides. The torque sequence is important. If you need to, you can look it up in your service manual. So we're going to start with these center 5 16 bolts, so the torque is 25 on these. And these have already been snugged up. So I'm going to go down until I hit my 25, and it's not much. There it is right there. Okay. Then we're going to go across, and we're going to hit these two. Now we're going to alternate back and forth. So I'm here, so I'm going to go diagonally back to this one. Now this is a 3 8 bolt, but I'm just going to go ahead and torque it to the same torque value, 25, now I'm going to cross over to this one. Then we're back up front, crisscrossing, straight across. Now we're going to diagonal back here. We're going to go straight across to this one. Now we diagonal back up to the front. 
straight across, diagonal to the back, straight across, and diagonal back up to the front. And that, straight across, of course, that is your torque sequence. Now, we're going to go through and we're going to do it again because these will loosen up. If you see that, I was able to turn that some. So go ahead, as the manifold pulls down, these center bolts will loosen up. So, so go ahead and run this torque scenario again. To make sure they're all torqued. As this manifold pulls down, you'll see a difference here. I'm just going through and double checking, making sure none of them are coming loose. The end ones will usually stay torqued. Okay, back here, straight across, back up front. All right, now I'm going to set this for 30 foot pounds and I'm going to go do the 3 8 bolts. So that was 25, and we're going to take the 3 8 bolts, which is the bigger one, to 30. And we're going to start here, take that one to 30, go straight across. And then I'm going to go diagonal. Now remember, I'm on the angled bolts, the 3 8 bolts, because I'm going to 30 foot pounds. So we're just going from 25 to 30 on these, back up front to the angled bolt. And then back here. And that's it. Now go through and check all the angled bolts at 30. Make sure they're torqued. Make sure you didn't miss anything. Okay, that's all the 3 8 angled bolts. Now the bolts that go straight down in are 5 16 So I'm going to back this off to 25 foot-pounds. And I'm just going to double check and make sure I didn't didn't miss anything, so. Okay, we're looking good there. Oops. All right, so we've done it in sequence. Two different torque specs, 25 on the 3 8 bolts. I'm sorry, 25 on the 5 16 bolts, 30 on the 3 8 bolts in sequence, and we went over and double checked and made sure everything's torqued. Always loosen up your torque wrench, zero it out, and that intake manifold is installed. It's very important that you follow the torque specs on these. You don't want to over torque them. If you over torque them, the gaskets are going to leak. So, all right, that is pretty much it. I'm going to put the oil pan and a few other plugs on this thing. Now, I am actually not going to put the timing chain cover and the pan and so forth, the valve covers on. The customer is going to do that. He's going to paint the engine first and he wants to put the covers on. So, uh, that is really it for the 351 Cleaver build. I hope you enjoyed it. Yeah. If you have any questions, ask me below. This thing turned out really nice. Should be a should be a real screamer at 427-ish cubic inches. So I hope you enjoyed it, and I will talk to you very soon, I promise.